Hey, what is going on guys? It is Young here and today I'm back with another Fortnite tip and tricks video for you guys. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to get more wins in Fortnite and how to get those 20 bomb wins in Fortnite. This is a 20 kill gameplay and it is also a duos versus squad gameplay because I'm not a huge fan of that Fort Mirror stuff or whatever it is. I've been playing a lot more because the only other regular game mode out there is squads. So I've just been rocking a lot of duo squads lately. And before we get into the video, I'm going to be doing another V-Bug giveaway. If you guys want to win a chance to win some free V-Bugs, all you have to do is to drop a like on this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on my notifications, and leave a comment down below of your Xbox Gamer Tag, PSN Gamer Tag, or Epic account. I will be choosing the winners of this giveaway in just two days. So if you guys have not already entered the giveaway, make sure you guys enter the giveaway. And as well, make sure you guys add my new Snapchat. It is YoungHumorYT. I'm going to be doing all the announcements, V-Bug giveaway winners, everything on there. So make sure you guys add my snapchat and all right guys let's go right to the video so in this video i want to be teaching you guys how to get more kills in fortnite as well to get more wins in fortnite and to get more kills in fortnite i would always recommend first off there's three places you want to land if you want to go for those high kill games and those 20 kill games in season six and i would always recommend the island tilted towers and paradise palms i would say those are the three top locations you want to go to if you want to drop a 20 bomb or even consistently get close to a 20 bomb so let me explain why those three locations specifically are the best for high kills so first off tilted towers this is the place that i go to almost every single game i love to go tilted towers there's a ton of people there it's a lot of close range fight and a lot of fast paced gunfights and then after you leave tilted with five six maybe even seven kills or more you want to head towards the island and then from the island you're gonna be able to pick off a lot of players and then for the second spot is the island this is another really good spot a lot of times if you play very fast at the island you can walk away with four or more kills every single time and then from there i would always recommend immediately pushing tilted towers or maybe if you don't have a, don't have that much good loot i'd always recommend going straight down and in kind of the middle of loot like there is a massive amount of loot you can get full shield pretty much get everything you want there. there's also a ton of loot then from there after you got four or five kills or maybe even less you can even three kills and then after you get those three kills get the loot up and then from there push tilted towers a lot of times you can go immediately from tilted tower to the l shape building if you guys know exactly what i'm talking about they're kind of on the left side of tilted you can go immediately from the island to there and that's usually where i go i can pick up a guy or two and then if you go quick enough like i said in the beginning with the island a lot of times people are not even fighting yet they're kind of just maybe you can get some good third parties in but a lot of times you're going to be able to walk out of Tilted with 7, 8, or even 9 kills if you get a few kills off the island and then immediately push Tilted Towers. And then the third spot was Paradise, and this is also a very good spot because of the rift location there. So a lot of times you can walk away, it's usually not as crowded as Tilted Towers in all those places, but you could usually walk around with 3 or 4 kills. And then after that, where you want to go after you get your maths up, get everything good, I would always recommend heading north towards Retail. And then from retail, there's always a team or two there. So maybe you can have six, seven, or even eight kills just off that. And then from there, of course, I would push towards either Dusty, you know, the upwards Dusty by the by the factories up there. Or I would push towards Salty. One of those two locations is also a really good spot. Next, I want to be talking about the new gliding system. And basically, now you can just pull out your glider whenever. You're pretty much immune to fall damage unless... If you find a way to, if you find a way to die to fall damage after this update. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I have nothing to say. Because now you can basically, from whatever distance, pull out your glider. And this could be really, really effective for getting around the map quickly. And a really good situation that I've been doing a lot is maybe I run into like a team of four that's been just completely lasering me. And I feel like I have a really bad disadvantage in the gunfight. So what I would do is I would outbuild them, I would uh, build above them. If I can't get, I would try to get as many shots as I can, maybe try to get a knock. But if I can't, I'll literally just jump off the side of the build fight and then just glide elsewhere. Try to get a little bit of distance between me and them, just so I can reset a little bit, maybe get some heals off or whatever I need to get, maybe even more mats. But with this feature in the game, that really changes a whole lot about how I'm going to play. And different situations as well, if I'm like low on mats, low on health, I could still challenge a guy and know I'm going to be able to get away. And of course, the island is there as well. So there's a lot of different factors that are going to be included and it also a main reason that i can get high kill games now and i've been getting a lot of high kill games is because of that feature so one thing that i wanted to talk about as well because i know a lot of you guys have been playing a lot of fortnite and having some really good games where you have like 12 or 13 kills like you're having a really really good game but you just feel like you keep losing games like you're having those really good games and then you just keep dying at the very end so i'm gonna give you guys some tips and tricks to help you guys out with that because i used to have that happen a lot where i'll have really really good games at the very end because i remember back in season four i've choked so many 20 bombs i would say at least five or six 20 kill games where i've gotten the 20 kills and then i've died to the last team 
and I've had that happen a few times this season as well, but not as much. But there definitely is a few ways around this, and the first tip I can give you guys when it comes to that is making sure even before the last team, it's not even specifically to the last team, maybe early guys in the top 15, top 20, I would always try to play of heals first. So sometimes when you're in those gunfights and you're just getting lasered for every single team, you feel like your health is dropping a ton. I would always recommend trying to get as many minis off, mini shields off as possible before trying to fight everybody because that's honestly the worst feeling ever, just dying when you know you have a ton of minis stacked up and just knowing you have a bunch of extra health stacked up, you just got to buy yourself a little bit more time. So always try to buy yourself a little bit of time and try to get those heals off. Don't worry about trying to get those knocks. And even if you're on those high kills and you feel like your kill might be stolen, I would always try to play life first. I always try to play for the win a little bit more. Because of course I like to play for the high kill games. But I feel like if I'm in situations where I don't feel like I'm going to win at all, I always try to dip out, maybe reset, get some maths, get my heals up. Just do anything I can to give myself the best position possible and the best advantages possible to win in that situation. And when it comes to the last team, if you guys feel like you're dying a ton to the last team, uh, the biggest tip I can give you guys is when it comes to the last teams or last few teams, keep in mind maybe you're in the top 10 in a duos or squads, what I would always recommend doing is trying to go for a third party every single time. So if you guys are feeling like you're not closing out games on those high code games, I'd always recommend trying to go for that third party every single time. Like right here in this situation, even in this gunfight right here, I see a ton of teams fighting. And even if there's a ton of teams fighting, I'm still able to pick off multiple players without taking any damage at all. I still have my max, pretty much max. I got a few kills off that. So going for the third party there is put me in the best position possible. I didn't take any damage at all. And I was still able to get a ton of kills off that as well. But of course, there is going to be those games where you're not going to get that pitcher perfect third party to win the game. But of course, you have to play as fast as possible because the last thing you would want in a squad, maybe you're a solo squad or duo squad, you're like the last person left on your team. The last thing you want to do is to fight a full team of, I would say, above average players or even average players that all have 200 health. That is the worst. Even for me, that's a difficult kill. If someone has 200 health, I can't one-tap them in any way. So I can maybe get one tag, two tag off, and they can just run away and heal up. So that's the worst possible situation to get in, and that happens a ton. So you always want to make sure you play as fast as possible and get as many third parties as possible. Because once you're fighting that team and you know they all have 200 health, you can get in a really bad situation. It might be kind of difficult to kill all of them, especially in squads when you have numbers down. So here in this gameplay, it is now a 2v3, so there's one team left. And basically, I would always recommend not trying to get in this situation because they probably have max health by now. But, you know, there's nothing I can do about it because I was third partying the team down here and I was able to get... I was able to get completely stacked of the team down here. I'm pretty much max maths, three big pots, have all the guns I could want. So right now, I'm actually in a pretty good spot health-wise and everything. So, of course, when it comes to the circle, and maybe if you don't have the best circle, and I'd always recommend a really good tip for you guys, is the circle is always eventually going to go outside. So what I mean by that is eventually, no matter what position or how good of a position they're in, they're eventually going to have to come down from that position and move, which you can always play slow in any game, and that's what I was doing here. I didn't want to push that team on the hill, because there's a pretty good chance they could have a ton of explodes. I think they had snipers in this gameplay, so I didn't really want to push that too much, because I didn't want to risk losing any health at all. So I'm just sitting back playing pretty passive right now. Waiting for, waiting for them to come down from the hill. And as soon as they come down, that's when I want to pressure the team. Because once they lose that high ground advantage, I'm going to have a pretty good chance of killing all of these guys. So the circle just started to come in. So I want to push up a little bit closer, but not yet challenge. I don't want to challenge at all yet. But I want to get a little bit closer to these guys. And since I don't know how hard these guys are of sprayers, I want to switch to my steel. Because steel, believe it or not, is actually the best material to use. You guys already know when it gets full health, it has the most amount of health. But also the starter health is higher than wood. So when you build out of steel, it's even harder to shoot out initially than it is for wood. So if you have a ton of steel in the end game, I'd always recommend using steel first. It also really affects if maybe your teammates go down, you can get a good revive off. So definitely recommend using steel if you have a ton of it in the end game. So this guy is pretty much just transferred hills. So I I'm just going to try to get a little bit of advantage on these guys. They shoot me out, but it doesn't matter a whole lot because I'm just high enough to where I can get on the hill with them. So now with one guy below me, they're spraying at me. And, and in squads and in this position right here, the best thing I could have done was use that uh, grenade launcher or pumpkin launcher. Try to get a tag off because I want to try to get 
you guys as low as possible. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get the knock on that guy. I really wanted to because I knocked this guy for a lot of health. And when you're fighting teams like this that spray a ton 3v1, you always want to try to make sure you have high ground before you take a shot. Because if not, if you get the low ground, you're going to get screwed over. Only because if you if you have the low ground and you have no health, that's when you're going to get screwed over. And for here, I try to get the knock on the guy. I probably shouldn't have challenged as hard as I did. But it's all good. So I'm going to back up, try to give myself a little bit of room, try to pop a, a big shield or two. But I'm also keeping in mind of the guy knocked. But since I know these guys are pretty noobish and they were just spraying at my walls below, I wanted to go for a quick pumpkin launcher over the edge. And I was able to kill both of them and kill the guy who was knocked. So I was able to get pretty much a triple kill with that pumpkin launcher for the 20 kill game. So it was a really good game. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. That's going to wrap it up. If you guys like this video, make sure to drop a like on this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Turn on my notifications. And as well, make sure you guys add my Snapchat if you guys haven't already. And alright guys, I will see you in the next video.